Welcome back to Axminster's head office here in Devon. We're in the Skills Centre once again with Ben behind the camera. And um, we've got another little information video for you, really. I, I thought today we'd look at sanders. Power tool bench tops, uh, bench sanders. Um, there are so many different types, from, from belt sanders to, to orbital sanders to random orbital sanders. So many different variations and makes, shape and size within that. If you're looking to buy a sander or got a particular job, which sander will do that job? Um, I know I've got my particular favourite and go-to on the table here, but there's some, some really rough, coarse, aggressive sanders here. There's some kind of general purpose, middle of the road, do everything reasonably well sanders, and there's some kind of ultimate finishing machines. So when you're thinking about sanding, that's kind of what you got to think. Am I looking for stock removal? Am I looking for you know, just a bit of everything, just a quick, you know, sand here, sand there, sand some paint down, bit of decorating in the house sort of thing? Or am I looking to make a piece of furniture where the finish has to be sweet? You want to put some 300, 320 grit paper on there and before you've even put a varnish or an oil on it, it feels like it's got that glass finish. Um, we've got a sander on this bench that will do that for you. But what I'm going to look at first, I'm going to start at the, I was going to say the rough end, but it is the rough end because it's the coarse stock removal end. We're going to start by looking at belt sanders. So Ben, if you can just come down to the bench a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we get the sanders in, not so much me. Now, first off, I've got this piece of oak. Now, it doesn't look like much at the moment. It's extremely rough sawn. In fact, I think it's come off a chainsaw. But I need it to look like this. It's actually going to be the bar top or part of the bar top in my, um, in my summer house I built over, over the last few months. Um, it's a beautiful piece of oak. Um, you've got medullary rays coming through it. It's just going to be a lovely colour. Um, I'm not going to take a belt sander to this surface because it's almost there. But I am going to demonstrate on this rough side stock removal on a uh, with a belt sander. Now, a belt sander is kind of exactly what it says on the tin. What we've got... Is that about right? Can you see yeah, that, Ben? Yeah. We've got an abrasive belt, a continuous loop of thick cloth back abrasive with, um, with obviously this one's aluminium oxide, uh, as most sanding belts are. This one is 80 grit, which is getting quite coarse, and most certainly on a belt sander, which is a fairly aggressive stock removal machine. Um, it's going to Take no prisoners. It's going to remove material quick. So we'll have a look at that. And incidentally, on a belt sander, there's a right way and a wrong way to put your belt on. On the inside of your belt, you've got some arrows. They're direction arrows. You've got to follow those. On your machine, you've got an arrow. Match up the arrow to the arrow. Make sure that your belt is revolving in the right way. And that's really to do with this overlap on the joint here. The wrong way could pick up the overlap and snap the belt. Make sure you got that the right way around. Just as simple as that. So, where's my arrows? Make sure I'm putting it on the right way around. Drops over the two wheels. Right. Here we go. Tension back on. And on these, you've got this little knob on the side here which is a tracking knob for the front roller. Generally the rear roller, the rear tire, is your drive. That's what gives you the power. The front one is for tracking. It's rather like the top wheel on a bandsaw. You can tilt that top wheel to get the belt or the bandsaw blade running in the right position. And that's just a very subtle movement here. All right, so one thing as well is important with with any sanding is some sort of dust protection now i'm going to hook this up to a dust extractor so i've got this m class bosch closed filter system fine dust container that i'm going to hook up to as many sanders as i can but whilst i'm doing this i'm still gonna wear one of these guys 
because these can kick up a lot of dust. So I'm going to protect myself. Um, Ben's going to put one on behind the camera as well, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to put my eyes on. I'll put my dust mask on last. I'll just connect everything up first. So these are really cool, these extractors. You can plug your power tool into the extractor itself. Then flick it onto kind of the power tool symbol or A for auto if you've got that sort of thing. Um, I'm going to turn that off just for a moment. Standard Hoover pipe size, so a really common kind of 32 to 35 millimeter will drop in nicely actually into the outlet on. Well, oh, this is a Fez tool sander, but this is a Boss extractor. Don't worry about that. You don't have to go brand for brand. You don't go to Bosch Extractor, Bosch Sander, Festool Extractor, Festool Sander, Merca Sander, Merca Extractor. It doesn't matter. As long as you've got good airflow, and this side of extractor uh, is really good for this, this type of tool. So, you can hear? Well, that's kicked off straight away. As soon as I trigger the machine, the extractor starts, which is great because it saves me forgetting about turning it on. Um, and you can see already it's kicked up a little bit of dust in the air. So, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to pop my dust mask on. I don't fancy that on the lungs. There we go, so it's over. Pinched at the nose. Make sure I've got a good seal around the base here. All right, and I'm ready for action. Now, as said, the piece that I'm going to be sanding is rough. I'm never going to take this down in one hit. And to be honest, this board, I'd probably put through my plane of thicknesser. I'd, I'd get rid of, there's even mud on the end of here. I'd get rid of that mud first. But I'm just going to highlight what it can do and how fast it can remove material. All right? I move those, Ben. Can you see? Yeah. a little bit difficult to see but we're down to some really clear clean bare wood already now that's removed a lot of material a lot went up the extractor there was still a little bit sitting on the surface here that you saw me back off which is you know the importance of uh, wearing the dust mask because your extractor on a belt sander in particular ain't gonna get it all there are machines here power tools here sanders here that that do work uh, much more efficiently belt sanders maybe not so much but that has really started to bring that up really quickly and i kind of felt that the belt was maybe struggling a little bit maybe it was a little bit clogged hey you can go if you want some seriously fast stock removal you could go even coarser on the belt this is an 80 and you can see on this one it's just started to clog up a little bit well, what you can do, what is pretty cool, now this is good for your, your power tool belt sanders, you can carefully wow. A little abrasive cleaning stick is always worth having for belt sanders, I've even used it on this style of sanding plate as well. Disc sanders, because abrasives of this quality, they take ages to actually wear out. What they do is clog up more than, than, uh, more than wear out quick. And with this kind of, kind of silicon rubber type uh, abrasive cleaner, you can freshen up the grit 
and it cuts into the material, sands the material quicker and more efficiently. So the belt sander, a stock removal machine. Aggressive, fast, good for flattening off big log areas, big natural edge tables, this kind of rough stuff. Good for floors as well if you're kind of flattening and leveling off. Um, you can get quite close to an edge, so if you're doing a floor, the walls here, you can get quite up to an edge. Not too cool getting into corners because of this round nose on the front. Generally they come in 3 inch width, 76 mil, 4 inch width, 102 mil. And the bigger you go, generally, the more powerful they are. And with a coarse paper, like I said, maybe even 60. I've even known as 40 grit on one of these. And man, they remove material then. So a good stock removal flattening machine. Big fan of belt sanders. Not that I have to use one all that often, I must say. So let's unplug that. Right, and we'll look at... Well, we've got a variation on the belt sander. Still a belt sander. Who recognises this butte? Been around for a long time. The good old power file, black necker power file. It is a belt sander. We can see the belt there, much narrower. This is uh, ooh, 13 mil, half an inch sort of thing. Um, you've got the same sort of thing where you can take the tension off, take the belt off. Um, these are good for, I think carvers use these a lot, um, just for final finishing, getting into areas that are difficult to get into. Um, it's not a big sanding surface, so, you know, if I was doing something like this, it would literally take me a month off Sundays. Um, but really good for getting into tight corners and shaping. You know, carving might be your thing. Alright, you've gone in with your chisels. And you just want to fine and refine something. Just blending in. So these are really cool. Relatively inexpensive. They don't hook up to extractors, but you do have a little filter box container there to try and contain the waste. And we can see some of the waste in there as well. And there's a little filtration pad in there to help control that dust. So these are cool. Variable speed as well. Like the, the belt sander we used before was variable speed. Um, speed variations, generally, if I'm trying to do some finer work, I'll have the, the speed a little bit faster. If I'm trying to remove a lot of material, I'll slow it down just a little bit. Because like a lot of machines, uh, cordless drills for instance, when you slow the speed down, you slow the speed, but you increase the torque. So it gives you more, more drive to remove that material. So Black & Decker Power File. Drop that one there. There's even a cool little cordless version that Proxon do. Now, years ago, I wasn't a big fan of cordless tools unless it was a drill. And by that is way before battery technology where, was where it is now. The lithium ion battery is far more compact. Um, holds much more energy than the, the nickel cadmium or, or nickel metal hydroid batteries used to do. Um, so I'm a fan of cordless sanders. Who'd have thunk it? There's even a lot of cordless routers out there now. Trimmers, maybe trimmers more than routers, but they're still much more useful um, as a cordless tool. Um, this little thing will be ideal for, for, for shaping this little fella. Alright, just blending in certain areas. Vary the speed. You can even change the angle of the head to help you get into certain spots there. And it just feels nice, good in the hand. Great for carvers and little bits of work like Okay. Let's move Groot out of the way. Baby Groot. Abrasive cleaner. So, safety specs. So there are kind of three or variations of belt sanders, stock removal machines. What I'm gonna go on to now, I've got three which are in the same kind of class. Now they are orbital sanders. All right, so they've got that little, little shuffle, that little shake. That's the action that they do. 
they're good all-rounders they can remove material and when you get one that's that sort of size which is classed as half sheet now this is quite old thinking here that is a sheet of abrasive a sheet of sandpaper all right now these were classified way back this would be classified as a half sheet sander one two half a sheet fits this sander size these sanders were made because this was a regulation common size of abrasive paper almost a four ish if you see that so half sheet a little bit overlap here because often these loop round and and clip in there's the clip things there you go you got little clips so your paper would would hook in and under and then be pinched in place like that and many rolls of abrasive you buy a roll of abrasive well it's kind of about 115 mil in width well that's equal to this all right so you can it's probably i mean you can buy specific pads ready cut for you but probably a more cost effective way to do it is buy a roll you can buy even 50 meter rolls if there's one kind of abrasive style that you use a lot of and cut it to length yourself to suit your half sheet sander that's why those rolls are that width when you buy them um, the one key thing though and it's, it's the same on these two as well these holes in the base are important they're to help with waste clearance now we know about waste clearance and I don't want to bang on about dust mask and extraction da, 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 da. but they'll make your sanding a better job if you can draw that waste away either with something like this or at least help guide it into the bag and what helps guide it into the bag is if you have an abrasive that matches these holes there's a fan inside here kind of the motor fan helps draw the waste up from your sanding area and push it into the bag if you've just got a plain abrasive those holes are covered up they don't work and you end up sanding the dust that you've just created and it stays on the surface and then what happens is with the movement the heat the friction build up you end up with super mega clogging here your abrasive gets little black patches because it's just sanding the dust that you've just created it puts a little bit more strain on the motor than the sander i guess but importantly if you've got as this one is a combination kind of velcro base as well there's a lot of heat in this area and it melts the loops uh, sorry the hooks on the velcro and then when you do come to want to use your velcro thing it doesn't stick to it the base has had it you've got to replace the whole base which can be up to 30 quid on some machines machines like this kind of orbital sanders they come in the box more often than not with this little weird thing with little spikes on it it's called a punch plate so if you're using your plain abrasives you can put that on the base of your sander and literally oops push your sander onto the punch plate piercing those holes up into the base of the machine for that fan inside the sander to then pick up the waste draw it into the bag punch plates come with most orbital sanders these sanders as said this is a half sheet this is a quarter sheet or quite commonly known as a palm sander one two three four there is another sander on the market which to be fair i don't see around too much these days which is a third sheet sander so you get one two three on your abrasive paper this style of sander is it's kind of a good all-rounder with a coarse paper and something of this sort of size you can remove material reasonably quickly and the finish is if you go fine paper is okay um, for the job you're doing garden furniture skirting doors paint off that sort of stuff that's all right but if it's a kind of piece of furniture something you made a you made a cabinet or a unit like this maybe you know and it's a piece of furniture in your house you think oh that's that's a good finish i've taken that down to 180 grit with this sander that's why that's quite nice and when you drop some oil on boom lots of little swirl marks pop up 
because this has a patterned action. It does that movement. It's just a regular, regular movement. So you end up with regular swirl marks on here. Unless you go ultra fine on your paper, even with ultra fine paper, and they're still there, but the eye doesn't see them so much. But even if I went to 240 grit on this, I'd still see those swirls, but I only see those swirls when I put oil on. And it can be a bit frustrating. I think, oh, that finish isn't quite what I wanted it to be. But, as said, they're a good all rounder. I've got a couple of these. I've got a Makita one like this, I've got a Dewalt one at home. Um, I've got a big old Elu version of this, which is massive. Thing weighs a ton. Um, they're comfortable to use in the hand. I wouldn't use it for, for any kind of aggressive work like this. I'd go to a belt sander. Um, but maybe if I was just, I'm getting close to my finish. You know, a better surface, I'm closer. This would be lovely on here. Just to take me down to a, a flatter surface, a nice big wide platform, helping me flatten out as I go. Doors and windows maybe, certain for, for decorating purposes, um, but that fine final finish, maybe not, maybe not. I have got a favourite on this bench, and you maybe have already guessed what it, what it might be. But appraisers for these also, like I say, you can buy the plain sheet, plain sheet like that, you can buy rolls, but use the punch plate because it'll make your sanding job better, it'll draw that waste away into the bag. You can buy what are called multi-hole abrasives, lots of little perforations, so no matter where you put it on there, these holes and the perforations, the tiny holes in there, will always line up with um, some, of the, some of the holes in the base. Right, really negating the need for your punch plates. Velcro as well, I'm a big fan of Velcro stuff. These have little clips that hold plain paper on, but the Velcro is a nice thing as well. I think a top tip on these is they're made to be used flat. I know there's probably a tendency, you've got a little black spot there that you want to get rid of, and you do that and you've you got it on the corner. That don't do your machine any good at all. There's little nylon or plastic feet in here which hold the base up and they're designed for that way. They're designed for load that way. You start doing that and you can snap them and you can bend over the end of your thing. These are really designed. If you've got a bit of rough stuff there and you've got to get rid of it, I know we all do it, I mean, I still do it, but it's not recommended. Um, you really should look at putting a slightly coarser paper on and just working that area than giving it a bit of that. If I press harder, it's going to do a better job. You know? All you're doing is arresting the movement, stopping the movement. If you really push, I'll, I'll sit on it, that'll be better. Leave it go, let it do its job, let it move. Because if you're pushing down on it, you're just stopping that movement. You're not going to get um, an effective sander, compromise the finish maybe. There are, as said, sweet little cordless versions here. Got the Bosch 18 volt. We're working on a Bosch 18 volt uh, kind of kit in here. We've got a lot of drills. It's the kit that I've got at home as well. Um, nice little filter box in this one, keeping the dust inside. We've got the multi hole abrasive again, although this does have the clips to, um, if I can figure them out, here we go, to take normal abrasives. And this one's quite a sweet little sander. It's just a little. Demo. Regular, regular movement. Right, you can just about see it's quite a fine paper on there. But I've got just this little bit of rough sawn bit here. But it's starting to take that off in the middle. Right, so they can remove material well. But for my final finish on my bar top, I'm not going to be using something like this. I love them, palm sanders, great size, really handy. 
the Bosch one, by the way, this fella, has a couple of different bases you can fit to it. You've got the, the iron shape base, which this unscrews with four screws, that goes on, and it really does get you into those details, right into the corners. You can get into corners with the square, I know, but if there's any kind of triangles you're trying to get into, you can get into that as well. It's got a, another base shape there. All right. So that's quite a cool little sander. Great if you're on the kind of cordless setup. Now over to what has become most certainly my favourite style of sander to use. We are on to another little, another palm sander there, Makita. We're on to the random orbital sander. Picture an angle grinder. Goes round and round and round and round and round and round. And round. And in fact, you can turn an angle grinder into a sander, an aggressive sander, and there were most definitely going to be marks left and lead, but you know that they, they can be quite useful as well for big stock removal on massive carving projects, or you've got some railway sleepers and you want to cut some shapes in them or round over some edges. These are maybe outside jobs, because man, do they remove some material, like a belt sander, it makes a mess. Um, but these are, the, the random orbitals are, in my opinion, from my experience, ultimate finishing machines. They have some negatives. In fact, I, I think they have one negative. The fact that they're round, you can't get into corners. I can't really think of another negative for a random orbital sander apart from that. Because they are superb at stock removal. You put a coarse paper on and it removes material really quickly. And if you've got a machine with variable speed, this little Bosch here doesn't have variable speed, but if you can drop that speed a little bit, increases the torque with a coarse paper, you can remove some material. Pick that speed back up, however, put a fine paper on. Now, almost always, these are hook and loop Velcro style. These are the hooks, these are the loops. So the hooks and the kind of the fluffy bit is on the back of the abrasive. You see holes. It's the same theme as with the other sanders. Try and align the holes when you're putting it on. Just like that. All right. The waste then goes through the hole, gets drawn up by the fan into the box or into the extractor. Certainly helps the extractor. These are kind of my go-to sander. I've got a couple at home. I've in fact got one almost identical to this and I'm lucky enough to have one of these babies as well. But we'll get on to that in a minute. So they're random orbital. This is orbital. It follows a regular pattern which can leave swirl marks. We've been through that. This is random orbital. So as well as having that, that little shuffle, that little shake, and giving you that, that oscillation and that, that sanding movement, because if you were doing this, it's got that as the orbital sander sand. But this one goes round and round, but it doesn't go round and round in a perfectly concentric way. It's eccentric. So this base is actually mounted on the shaft offset. So you've got that side to side shuffle. You've got the round and round, which is offset an absolutely completely random um, patterning on your material. Getting rid of all swirl marks. This is the ultimate finishing machine in my opinion. The ultimate finishing sander. Often they're lightweight, comfortable in the hand, particularly this 125 mil, five inch palm type. It's got a nice rubberized grip on it because often sometimes, you know, you're using a sander for for quite some time on big big surfaces, big jobs, got to be comfortable in the hand. And these these rubber grips are not just a, an aesthetic thing. Um, they're, they're kind of a little bit vibration absorbing. Um, you're holding on to this rubber, not holding on to this, this hard plastic. So it's a bit more forgiving on, on the user, on the operator. And, and they remove material as same with the coarse paper well, but they finish superbly. Um, at the end of the day when you just before it's that finish just before you're about to put your, your lacquer on or, or your oil on this one as I said five inch lovely tool another Bosch number 
And now, two. Yes, my favourite. Now this one, I was going to say been to hell and back, but that's not fair. It's done a lot of work. It's the go-to sander in our workshops here down in Axminster. Um, the the Mercadiros. It's a random orbital. Velcro base. Extraction port. It's lightweight. It feels just so good in the hand. You've got this nice sweet little paddle switch on the top. You can vary the speed and it just glides over the material. Feels really nice in the hand. Okay. With Velcro bases like this, I like to put what's called a pad saver on there. So it's a little kind of in-between pad, Velcro, because these can be quite expensive if they get damaged or, or smacked or well used. So this little pad saver, which is a relatively inexpensive thing, just drops on, I'm, I'm aligning the holes there, just drops on and it's kind of like a protective surface in between my abrasive and my main pad. Again, there's a number of different papers you can get for it or abrasives. The multi-hole. So you can drop that on anyhow and holes are going to line up somewhere to get the extraction through. You can buy kind of specific holes. Uh, there you kind of line up yourself. All right. Or, again, has become uh, kind of our favourite here, is the, the Abronet, the mesh abrasive. Now you can hopefully see my hand through that. It's a very durable kind of mesh weave type of thing. It comes in a wide range of um, uh, grits, um, is fluffy on the back, so it's got the loops, and drops onto there, sticks on nicely, and the waste is drawn through really well. Because the waste is drawn through really well, these really don't clog too much. They eventually will wear out. But if you've got it hooked up to a good extractor, similar to the one behind me, they can remove material quickly, fine paper. This is, well, we use this as our, as our finishing sander. It's such a good tool. 240, 320 grit. I don't go beyond that. I don't need to, to be honest. 180, 240. I generally don't go beyond that for a, a tabletop or something. Um, some oils, in fact, when you go too fine on your abrasive, you start to seal the wood a bit, start to burnish it, polish it, and some oils won't penetrate into the material too well. So I, I know that the Osmo oil, uh, for instance, they don't recommend beyond sanding beyond 180. But even with a 180 on this particular sander, I can get a, an amazing finish, good enough for a piece of furniture in my house anyway. I'm going to have a little play with this one because I just like playing with it. Right, so I'll hook it up to the extractor. Incidentally, where is it? There it is. Um, sometimes these Hoover pipe sizes, they don't quite fit your machine. They're, they're, they're different. Um, this little rubber stepped adapter is a good thing that, that we sell. It goes on there, will fit just about anything. You can cut it off if you want at these various state, stages to, to suit your machine. Um, this one I know drops onto this really well, goes on there, okay, make sure my little hole's closed. I'm on to auto, and in fact this little thing that I turned off here, AFC, auto filter clean, it can be quite noisy. I'll leave it on and you'll hear what it's all about, now I explain what it is. Um, I'll stick a dust mask on. Even though I don't usually with this one, but because I'm on a video, I suppose I might. Right, turn him on. The best thing first, though, before you turn it on, and it's always recommended this, is to plug it in. There you go. Right, now you turn it on, green to go.
the way the, the air being drawn through there by the extractor. Maybe difficult to pick up on the camera, but I removed quite a lot of material quite quickly with that sander. No dust on the surface. And I'm going to finish that kind of feels about right for me. You know, that's going to take an oil lovely. Um, I've not clogged my abrasive in the slightest. All right, it was a new 120 grit. Um, but just kind of the ultimate sander. So if there's, you know, the point of the video, if there's one sander to go for that does most everything for you, I think this one's the way to go. Good at stock removal, um, great at finishing. Not too expensive, these, these aren't a crazy price, these little fellas here. Um, and if you're using one an awful lot, you can, you can push the boat out and go for one of these beauties. Another little thing, I tell you what, this is something we use a lot. To take these two pads off, pad saver, and what you've got is a, is a foam, thick foam. This is about, I don't know, 12 mil foam. If you're sanding contours and shapes, um, we make Windsor chairs here, and we've got to sand the seat shape, the bit that your bum sits in. It's got to be smooth, and we're following those contours. This flexible pad works really well. Turn that off, there we go. Line up the holes, stick your abrasive on as normal, and what we've got then is something with some base flexibility to follow the contours that you might have carved in or arbitacked in or just sanding some curves and shapes. You might have rounded over the end of this with a router and you want to just blend a couple of little lines in along the length or something. Because this is now flexy, it bends and follows the contours that you've just shaped. Um, so uh, yeah, a, a, a nice addition and probably worth looking at if, uh, if it's not only flat stuff that you do. Now that thumping noise you might have picked up on the camera was the auto f uh, cleaning uh, system within this style of extractor, the M class extractor. You can turn it off, but it's probably wise to leave it on if you've got a lot of sanding to do. Because it, it maintains the efficiency of your extractor by thumping uh, kind of pushing air into the, the filter and, and shaking all the dust out of the filter down, down into the back. Cleaning the filter itself kind of thing. Um, yeah, so this style of thing works great with the sander. So I, that is about it, I think, for, for kind of powered sanders. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are still times that you need to get the old cork block out. You do a bit of hand sanding. There's nothing wrong with that. We all still do it. It's not all about power tools and the machines. Some good old traditional elbow grease is sometimes where it's at as well. Um, wow, so that's kind of a bit of information about sanders. We've looked at quite a few. The coarse stock removal belt sanders. The kind of middle of the road orbital sanders. And what are they? The, the kind of real ultimate finishing machines which are in the, the random orbital sanders. Hope you find that useful. I've been Craig. Ben's been behind the camera once again on a workshop Wednesday. We're back at four o'clock next Wednesday. Um, don't forget to check out Colwyn's video tomorrow where he's back in his workshop at home turning. Um, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to leave any comments and questions you've got or anything you need me to clarify. More than happy to help with anything that you guys need. Um, Thanks again. Bye-bye.